inaugural address, uh, President Biden said his whole soul, quote unquote, was in the cause of, quote, bringing America together, uniting our people, and uniting our nation, end of quote. Very worthy things to speak, and especially in an inaugural address. He also recognized that Americans have serious disagreements. Everyone knows that our country is deeply divided politically. I know from his time in the Senate that President Biden understands that people of goodwill can have honest disagreements about policy. So he knows that unity does not mean dropping deeply held beliefs and accepting his own policy agenda. As he said, and I have two quotes here, every disagreement doesn't have to be a cause of total war and disagreement must not lead to disunion. Real unity requires rediscovering what binds us together as Americans, even when we have strongly disagreed politically. As I have often said, our nation is unique in human history in that it was founded not on the basis of common ethnic identity or loyalty to, let's say, a monarch, but on certain enduring principles. Those principles are best articulated in simple but eloquent words of the Declaration of Independence. And you all read these regularly, I'm sure. Quote, we hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they're endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights. Among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness." End of quote. It is a common commitment to this ideal that has bound us together as Americans from the beginning. Our patriotic, our patriot forefathers concluded that these principles were worth, worth fighting for and took up arms in an improbable quest to defeat the largest and best trained military at that particular time. This included many black patriots who fought for American independence, a unifying fact that I believe deserves a monument on the National Mall, something that I've been working for for years. Now I want to quote Margaret Thatcher. She once observed this, a fairly long quote, so bear with me. Americans and Europeans alike sometimes forget how unique is the United States of America. No other nation has been created so swiftly and successfully. No other nation has been built upon an idea, the idea of liberty. No other nation has so successfully combined people of different races and nations within a single culture. Both the founding fathers of the United States and successive waves of immigrants to your country were determined to create a new identity, whether in flight from persecution or from poverty. The huddled masses have, with few exceptions, welcomed American values, the American way of life, and American opportunities. And America herself has bound them to her with powerful bonds of patriotism and pride. The European nations, Thatcher continues, are not and can never be like this. They are the product of history, not of philosophy." End of Thatcher's quote. This quote from a British leader is one of the best summaries that I have read about Americans' exceptionalism. The term American exceptionalism is often misunderstood, perhaps due to a quirk 
of the English language. Merriam-Webster's dictionary gives three definitions of exceptional. One, forming an exception, like as they give an example, rare an exceptional number of rainy days. Or two, better than average, superior exceptional skill is the words they expand on average. Deviating from the norm, such as having above or below average intelligence or physical dis disability. Many people here and abroad assume that those who talk about American exceptionalism are just using the second definition and simply asserting that the United States is better than any other country. And that is a wrong interpretation. American exceptionalism is an assertion of the plain fact that America's foundation is very different from that of most other nations. However, our foundation is increasingly under attack from both the right and the left, both the 1619 Project and white nationalists assert that America's founding principles are a lie and that the United States was founded along ethnic lines. Oddly enough, this was a position taken by John C. Calhoun in the United States Senate when he articulated an alternative to the founding principles intended to justify maintaining slavery in per perpetuity. Unfortunately, Abraham Lincoln, who revered the Declaration of Independence, prevailed. The notion that our founding principles are a lie isn't just bad history, it breaks the bonds that unite Americans of all backgrounds. The 1776 Commission was established specifically to quote, enable a rising generation to understand the history and principles of the founding of the United States in 1776 and to strive to form a more perfect union, end of quote. The introduction to the 1776 report states that, quote, a rediscovery of our shared identity rooted in our founding principles is the path to a renewed American unity and a confidence in American future, I, end of quote. I could not agree more. That is why I was deep disappointed to see President Biden terminate this commission the same day he took office after making his call for unity. The call to unity is exactly what the president asked for in his inaugural address. What specifically in that 1776 commission document does President Biden disagree with? Yes, the report is critical of far-left efforts to denigrate our founding principles, but it is also an important corrective to the alt-right effort to import European styles ethno-nationalism, which is also deeply un-American in every sense. The 1776 report calls for, quote, a restoration of American education, which can only be grounded on a history of those principles that is accurate, honest, unifying, inspiring, and ennobling, end of quote. By contrast, California has proposed an ethnic study curriculum that is rooted in the fundamental divisive tendency of critical race theory, which with its focusing on separate groups of Americans into different degrees of oppressor and oppressed. Interestingly, 
despite the California curriculum's focus on victims of prejudice, discussions of anti-Semitism is omitted in favor of criticism of Israel. This curriculum also totally skips over the life and work of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Remember his dream? So I quote that statement that he made. It is a dream deeply rooted in the American dream. I have a dream that one day this nation will rise up and live out the true meaning of its creed. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal, end of quote. Now, that is a very unifying statement. I encourage all Americans to read the 1776 report for yourself. See if you don't agree with the central message that shared attachment to our timeless founding principles is what binds us as a nation. It is no longer available on the main White House, White House website, but can still be found on the Trump administration's archived website. It is also available on the Hillsdale College website. I have another 